I'm using your question that you have sent me. So this is the question. Right, when you are doing a manufacturing account, first it has two parts, the manufacturing part and the income statement. So we will start with the manufacturing part and then we go to the income statement. A manufacturing account is there to help us to determine the cost of goods manufactured. And then from there, we transfer those goods to the income statement to see if the business has made a profit or a loss. So here in our question, we are going to take only those things that relate to the manufacturing account. Uh, you can tick for yourself those things that relate to the manufacturing only. So as I do my illustration, I'll be having them here. The first point is to start with the opening inventory. It's given at the top. The dates are very important to guide you. So in this case, our opening inventory of raw materials was 23,500. Right. Immediately to that, you add any purchases of raw materials. Remember, raw materials are needed for manufacturing, so we may buy raw materials as a business. Since in this question, there are no carriages of raw materials, we don't see anywhere where raw materials were carried or were retained. So we don't have any adjustment here. So we go straight to adding, right? We are adding those two numbers. They give us 148, uh, 100. I normally prefer to use the last column for this adjustment. Um, that's what I prefer myself, but you can always maybe do the adjustment in the middle column, then you, you transfer your final answer, which I shall show you to the last column. But myself, I prefer to do it in the last column. So soon after this, we say less. Um, closing inventory of raw materials it is given down there as 26, 100 again. So at this point, what do we have? All right. We have what is known as raw materials consumed. At that point, we will have what is called raw materials consumed. This is the thing that we are looking for. Mm, how much is it? 122,000. So raw materials consumed are representing our direct materials. So this is what we call direct materials. If we you do some explanations about the manufacturing account, we have what are known as direct materials. These are raw materials that are used to produce uh, the individual items. And these are also a direct cost because they relate to the individual units produced. So this is what we were looking for when we are adjusting all these numbers. Now, once you get that, the next step is to add what are called factor wages. Or sometimes these days, examiners prefer to call them factory operatives. And in this question, if you check, they are indicated as direct. Uh, they are indicated as factory workers. You can see the terminology is, is, is varied, but we look at those that relate directly to the units produced, right? So there is an adjustment according to the question. If you check, they were given here is 136, but down here they are saying direct wages accrued is 2200. So this way they are saying direct wages accrued here, it's related to this where they are saying factory workers. Yeah. So we are we are adding those two together because it's, it is an accrual. So at the end we get, uh, sorry, fish. Okay. So at the end we get something like 138 to 100. So 138 to 200 and then 
we have another direct expense which is given there in our case and we are also given what are known as direct expenses here and these ones are part of direct expenses as the name suggests so they are added together with this together with the raw materials right so we take it the way it is and we add so it was given to us as 16300 So if we add together all these numbers, what do you get? We get a number like 274,300. What is this 274,300? Right. It's a very important number which examiners will always look for. This, this thing. This number. It's very important to examine us. It's known as prime costs. Right. Prime cost should always be shown. It's a sum of all direct expenses. Direct raw materials, direct labor, and then direct expenses. If we add all of this, they give us what is known as prime cost. Now, after prime cost, the next step is to, to add what are known as factor overheads of indirect factory expenses so you list them here i have quite a number of them according to the question remember we are building up the cost of producing goods so factory supervisors wages they are given here factory supervisors wages here mm -hmm. this is what we are now taking uh, there is no adjustment for them so we are just taking them the way they are At one four hundred. Then the next expense are general factory expenses. They are given. We are just taking them the way they are. And then the next one is in rates and insurance. Right? There is an adjustment for rates and insurance here. This is the rates and insurance. The figure given. But under additional information here, we are given this as accrued. So it is prepaid. So we are going to subtract it here, the prepayment. Then after subtracting, we are going to do an adjustment proportional. Three quarters goes to the factory and one quarter goes to the office. So this is what we are doing. First of all, we are going to subtract from 6360. We subtract 120, then we apply the percentage, uh, the proportion. So 6360 minus 120 times three quarters, you should get something like 4680. Then we have depreciation, but we are only considering depreciation of plant and and uh, machinery because this is what relates to the manufacturing part. Office office fixtures are not part of this account because they are office. So at 20%, but using what? The reducing balance method. So this is exactly what we are going to do. So we take the original cost, we subtract the accumulated depreciation at the beginning, then we are multiplied by 20%. So what do we get here? We get 12, 0, 3, 2. Right. Then we have um, again loose tools. Loose tools, uh, these are small tools that are used in the production process, but they cannot be uh, kept under double entry system because of their nature. So normally businesses use the revaluation method to find out the value of loose tools at any particular time. So if you check here, uh, we had loose tools at the beginning here at valuation. This then during the year some loose tools were purchased this one. And at the end of the year the value of loose tools was this one. Right. So what it means here is that the loose tools that we had at the beginning here plus the loose tools that we had we purchased minus the loose tools that are there. The difference 
is the loose tools that that we lost, which is depreciation of loose tools. So it's a revaluation method. So this is what we are going to do. Um, so the loose tools at the beginning plus loose tools purchased minus loose tools at the end. The difference here gives us a depreciation of loose tools, which is this. So at the end, what are we going to do? We are going to right, totalize. Good. So if you add those numbers, they will give you 67, 540, according to my calculator. Because re remember, we are adding, we are building up costs here. So what do we have after adding here? We have 341,840. So don't worry about trying to describe this, this value that we have just done. Uh, for now, uh, we go to the next step. We add what are known as working work in progress. Right, so here we are adding the opening work in progress. Right, it's a given at the beginning. Working in progress, these are goods that are still in the process of manufacturing. They are unfinished or uncompleted by the end of the year. So they are in vendor also. They are still in the warehouse. They will be completed in the next year. But immediately you also say let's closing work in progress. So immediately after that you come down here. You say closing work in progress and in this case it's given as 12 zero six zero like this now if you simplify according to your calculate you get something like three four zero eight hundred three four zero eight hundred what is three four zero eight hundred that's what we want to know what is it three four zero uh, three four zero eight zero zero is what is known as the cost of goods produced or cost of production. Right, so this is what we were looking for. We were looking at how much uh, we were trying to determine the cost of producing goods. How much did it cost for the business to produce these goods? So this is what the examiner was looking for from you. So once you've managed to do this, this is a simple process, your presentation of work, logical, step by step, 